We wanted to be fresh. We wanted to be innovative. And besides, we had to slap this thing together at the last minute. Anyway, this is the KSDK Newsroom, the nerve center of the number one rated newscast in St. Louis. And ooh, can't you just feel the excitement. Now, come on back over here. This is where we do those eyewitness news updates you see uh, 60, 70 times a day. Of course, everything the newscasters read is right off this teleprompter, but everything we say in sports is ad-libbed. Come on back to the sports office. All right, here we are. This is the sports office. Come on in. Now, this is where Channel 5's Art Holiday sits. And over here is our sports producer, Kim Hibbs. Kim does all the important work and gets none of the credit. Uh, Kim, uh, when you're off the phone, can you get me a cup of coffee? Now, over here, three television monitors ablaze with sports activity at all times, 24 hours a day. Now, over here is where I sit. And right over here is where Jay Randolph, uh, Mr. Randolph, sits. Of course, uh, he's gone a lot. He does a lot of work for the network. Now, come on back here. This is our viewing room. Here's where we keep all of the sports bloopers, all of the highlight zones. Every sports blooper you'd ever want to see is kept right here in this sports office. Well, maybe not every sports blooper, but at least enough to keep you entertained for the next 60 minutes an our long journey into the zone. Beyond the dimensions of the playing field, there is another dimension. A dimension not just of hits and plays, but of the bizarre. At the next foul pole up ahead, you've just crossed over into the highlight zone. The Special with Mike Bush and his guests tonight, Ozzie Smith of the Baseball Cardinals, Charlie Bourgeois of the Blues, Scott Mitchell of the Football Cardinals, Don Ebert of the Steamers, and introducing the computer-generated genius of Mike Headroom. So what is it we're going to try to do here tonight? Well, sportscasters have to be able to do a lot of things these days, like break stories, sports journalism, if you will, like the blues sale. Let's go to sportscaster Mike Bush, who is standing by at the arena. Mike? Dick and Karen, about 20 minutes ago, Harry Arness went out... We need to do in-depth stories, like our Glory Days series. But sometimes, just sometimes, sportscasters can also be entertaining. And that's what this show is all about, just entertainment. After all, what is sports but entertainment? Now, you're going to see some of the world's greatest athletes in some of their not-so-great moments. Remember, these guys have a lot on their minds, like bonus clauses, endorsements, urine tests. So sometimes things tend to go awry. Here, let me show you what I mean. All right, we begin with Ted Turner's Goodwill Games of 1986. Remember that exciting boxing championship? <laughs> Let's move on. The best left hook of the year right here as he nails the referee onto the Jerry Cooney Memorial Low Blow Award coming up right there. Ooh. And if that wasn't enough, he gets him from behind. Now here's two guys in the clinch of the year right out of the ring. Now look at this. David versus Goliath. Five foot seven against seven foot one. And the little guy wins. Down goes the big guy. Now, here's a referee that gets a little too pushy. Watch this. He pushes one of the boxers right out of the ring. Now, here's no moss, no moss revisited. Now, this guy, he's had enough, all right? He's leaving the ring. No more fighting. He's just going to walk out of the ring. The other guy, he doesn't want to disappoint the fans, so he's going to shadow box a little bit. Now, wait. The guy who left the ring is through fighting. Or is he? All right, now more problems for the referee, another left hook. And if you don't understand that, try this. When this one champion rises by his ability, will be likened to the suitors that were after Penelope, the wife of the king. And if only one king can be there, this king will be sitting supreme, ruling over Ithaca. Yeah, uh, right, Don. The floss of the year. You've heard of mass transit? How about mouth transit? Uh, here's a new way to stay warm this winter. And uh, kids, I should remind you, don't try this at home. <laughs> or this. Oh, <my> <laughs> 
All right, out of the golf, uh, this guy looks more like me as he comes back down into the river. Here's the great, the legendary Don January with a swing and a miss. All right, we go to pro golfer Larry Mize, who was having a bad day here on this hole. His first shot, just a little off and to the right and into the leg. All right, penalty shot. He'll put it onto the green and then into the other leg. Rex Caldwell on how not to get out of a sand trap. And here's a guy with a good idea. You think golf is a little too slow? Well, this guy has decided to combine golf and jogging. Says he does 18 holes in an hour and a half. You gotta love that. Best golf shot of the year, Bob Tway at 18. Out of the sand trap, and this one will go into the hole for the PGA Championship. Worst homemade airplane of the year, down it goes. Worst model airplane of the year, the flying pig. <laughs> Looks more like a turkey. All right, the Real Men Wear Skirts Award. That's right, folks. The guy in the skirt will win and splash the Tailgater Award. Amazingly, right here, he'll tailgate the right through him, but no one was hurt. Worst Cameraman Award? So close to these bicyclists, looks like you can almost touch them. In fact, you can. Yeah, out to the usually graceful art of figure skating. Beautiful, isn't it? And down she goes. All right, man versus beast now, and in this case, the beast will win. And in this case, the beast will win. And in this case, it wasn't even close. Up and over. Ooh. Of course, in the highlight zone, you don't need a bull to be upended. All right, now, we go to the Nina Pinta and Santa Maria. No, folks, this is not how Columbus did it. All right, we go on now to soccer, the heaviest shirt award. Watch this guy takes off his shirt, and then he will clobber the referee, and the referee goes down. Must have had a lot of starts. The combination using your head and Ozzie Smith award, first the goal, and then, of course, the backflip. To Australian rule football and a bit of bottoms up, down, under. Ladies, cover your eyes. All right, we go to Spain for bullfights. But who needs a bull? These matadors want to fight each other. Come on, guys. Best Ozzy Smith imitation by a four-legged animal. The terrier races and the number two dog, Bogart, up and over. Fortunately, Bogart was all right, finishes fourth. And so were Spot and Rusty. It's Spot on the inside. Rusty coming up on the outside, and they finish in a dead heat. Now, here's a dog who had the best idea. Yet, at the terrier races, he just turned around and went the other way back to the starting line. Now, we threw this one in just so you could go, ooh, it had to hurt. You don't have to be an athlete to make it on the highlight zone. Even the smartest men in the world take a trip now and then. Yes, ma'am, right here's lady. Yes, right. Second row, next to the guy in the blue shirt, holding her left hand up. It's a he, sorry about that. Recently, I received a letter from Masaya Su Okuyum. <laughs> Okumura. Oh, damn it. Coming up next, our baseball year in review, and what a year it was for bloopers and the like. But first, I know a lot of you have a lot of sports questions throughout the year, and who better to answer those questions than a computer? Our computer-generated answer man, Mike Headroom. I was watching the World Series on TV. Shea Stadium looks pretty dangerous. Is that true? Ha! No, 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 no. Shea Stadium is a great, 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 great place to watch a game. Not nearly as dangerous as people say. Unless, of course, you run out of bullets. The Highlight Zone special is brought to you by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated Brewers of Bush Beer. The beer with a taste as smooth as its name. Who's gonna show you? Yule, I can't wait to show you a big snowstorm coming out of Kansas. You gotta see it. Uh, I think I'll pass on that. Wait till you feel 50 degrees below zero wind chill factor in January. You're gonna love it. <laughs> nice welcome. In the dead of winter, I like to light a fire in the fireplace and kick back and watch my favorite programs on Channel 5. You got it? I got it. Good boy. Yeah, I got it. Out here. <laughs> yeah. 
Hi, I'm Billy Kidd. I'm on my way to do a little downhill skiing downtown at the Bush City Ski. Fifteen years driving a cab, I never heard one It's like a day this. of skiing excitement right here in your city as Bush Beer builds its own run and sponsors the fun. Thirty-two years driving a cab. So grab a friend and head for the mountains downtown. Don't miss the Bush City Ski, St. Louis. Well, we're here at Bush Stadium. We thought this was the perfect place to do our baseball segment. This is the press box. This is where you'll find your favorite and your least favorite sportscasters and sports writers sitting up and down the aisles here. Now, come on over here. This is the Bush Stadium press box cafeteria. Of course, all the food for the press is free, but we never let that interfere with our coverage. Now, come on back over here. You know, people always ask me, they say, Mike, you get to spend time in the press box. Where do they keep the stepladder? Right here, league approved. Now, come on back over here. You know, Mike Shannon and Jack Buck, the great Cardinal announcers, they get to see every Cardinal home game. Now, come on back over here. This is where they sit in the KMOX radio booth. It's empty right now. In fact, construction workers are on the field. It's sort of an eerie feeling. But sometimes it's eerie during the season. Hey, you, you want to see something really scary? You bet. Oh. Oh. I put a spell on you. Scary, where do you see the first of our great plays? All right, we begin with what I modestly feel is the Ozzie Smith Lookalike Award. Great play by the Bushman. All right. Best hang time by a third baseman, Terry Pendleton. Now, here's the wizard himself, Ozzie Smith, routinely taking a hit away from Cincinnati's Bo Diaz. Best impression of Willie Mays, right fielder Andy Van Slyke. With his back to home play, he'll take extra bases away from Glenn Hubbard. Sure, Vince Coleman can steal bases, but he steals hits as well, coming out of nowhere to make the diving catch. And for his next trick, Ozzie Smith catching lightning in the bottle off a bat of Juan oh. Samuel. The Do It With Style Award, Phillies pitcher Shane Raleigh goes behind the back to get George Foster's bouncer, and then he will throw him out. All right, we go to the American League. Texas Ranger pitcher Mike Mason. He'll go Raleigh one better. Mason goes behind the head, and he makes the stab, not even looking. And now he will throw to first base to get out Johnny Grubb. Max Venado of the Cincinnati Reds with the tweener into left center. The Mets, Lenny Dykes are there with the diving catch. The Yankees, Don Manningly, can do more than hit. He'll go way into foul territory here. Lunge and make the catch. The Just So Long As You Catch It Award goes to Kansas City's Lynn Jones into deep right field, and he makes a easy play look difficult. Best play by a second baseman against the Cardinals by Al Newman of the Expos to rob Vince Coleman. Best play by a former Cardinal, left fielder Lonnie Smith. Watch here, the sinking liner, and he makes the diving stab. You've heard of highway robbery? Well, how about home run robbery by John Shelby of the Baltimore Orioles? He takes away the home run. Now here's something you don't see very often, a triple play by the Cubs, no less. One out, over to third for two, and over to first for three, a triple play. Another great play by a former Cardinal, Ken Oberfeld, the diving stop, steps on third, over to first for the double play. More home run robbery here, Yankee Stadium, Claudel Washington of the Yankees, going to the wall, he's up and he's got it. 
Speaking of taking away home runs, remember this one, San Diego. Willie McGee, the batter, and he hits one long to right field. Tony Gwynn going way back to the wall. He makes the catch. Unbelievable. Keith Hernandez of the New York Mets plays first base better than anybody. Great play right there. And then over to first for the out. Best catch by a center fielder, Steve Lyons of the White Sox. On his horse, he's going back, maybe the toughest catch in baseball. He makes the diving catch. In Pittsburgh, Montreal's Tim Raines, he'll go over near the line. He will get the ball and then the wall. Great double play here. On the line drive, Scott Fletcher, then to Toby Hara for two. In Los Angeles, the Dodgers, a little stretching exercise by Jose Gonzalez of the Dodgers with a great catch. Best throw to the plate. We go north of the border. Jesse Barfield, the gun to home plate. A bullseye for the out. Denny Walling of the Astros over the railing, and he holds on. And here's a fan with a great idea. Gets the ball on the warning track, and look at this. It's up the wall. It won't fall. It's up the wall. Up, up, up. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Nice job. Give me a thumbs up on that. All right. And finally, the best catch of the year. You remember this one. Ozzie Smith going back. Somehow, he makes the grab and avoids Kurt Ford at the same time. And joining us now is the man who made that spectacular play, Ozzie Smith. And Ozzie, it would figure that a man who's so smooth and graceful as you are on the field would have a delicate hobby like this in the offseason, collecting delicate china. Oh, yeah, Mike. I like to uh, collect antique plates with uh, scenes from St. Louis painted on them. Ozzie, are these plates expensive? Oh, yeah, they get very expensive, Mike. Uh, there are only three like this in the whole world. Uh, two. Ozzy, which one of these plates is your favorite? It would have to be uh, this one. Boy, this is an expensive hobby. But Ozzy, for being the Cardinals' most valuable player, Channel 5 would like to present you with this trophy for 1986. Thank you, Mike. I'll treasure this. Well, uh, Ozzy, thanks for joining us on this very expensive evening. Uh, we appreciate that, and we'll, we'll see you in spring training. All right, Mike. Thanks, thanks a lot. By. All right. Appreciate it. Ozzy Smith. And Ozzy, look out for that. Ozzie Smith, as graceful off the field as he is on. Let's get things off to a crashing start. Crashing right on the head of first baseman Alan Nicely. Hardest swing of the year by Tim Conroy, and down he goes. Mike Laga with the knock on wood award. Mike, come on. Best pitch of the year by Todd Worrell. And catcher Mikey, he didn't do too much while he was in St. Louis but he sure always gave it his best effort. Best tackle of the year, Whitey Herzog. Yeah, worst tackle of the year. Who else? Whitey Herzog, down he goes. Whitey's just one of this year's bad boys. And from bad boys to big boys, like Ron Hassey, then of the New York Yankees. Ron over to get the foul ball. He goes over the fence. All right, now, uh, Ron, let's continue the game, so come on back out and catch for us. Uh, Ron, hey, sir, can you help me here? Sir, hey, somebody bring down an usher here. We need a little help. Where's security? Come on, Ron. All right, here's what they mean by keeping your eye on the ball. Ouch, Alfredo Griffin. Best play by a ball girl in Pittsburgh. Watch this, a pretty catch. Problem was, the ball was fair. Oh, oh well. <laughs> getting to know you, getting to know all about you right here, Gary Pettis and Brian Downing. Boom! John Denny of the Reds, uh, get that camera out of here. Sorry about that, John. Now, isn't that fountain at Royals Stadium beautiful? Oh, it, it's gorgeous, except, of course, when the wind comes up. 
Now here's the fleet-footed and sure-footed footing of Mariners first baseman Alvin Davis. Whoops. Tony Gwynn of the San Diego Padres here trying to make a play on Keith Hernandez. Makes a nice play here. Everybody in the park knows it, except for Tony, who doesn't know he has the ball. Alan Ashby against the Cardinals. A beautiful throw to second base to nobody. <laughs> Best catch by a fan. We go to Tiger Stadium. Give this guy a 10 for glove work, but a 1 for footwork. Charlie Liebrandt of the Royals with the pickoff attempt of the year. Whoops. Mike Davis of the Oakland A's, proving that timing is everything. Up and over. Best slot of the year by Steve Sachs of the Dodgers. Oh, ooh. What could be better than America's two favorite pastimes, baseball, and Wheel of Fortune. So please welcome our hostess, the lovely Mike Vanna Smithson. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, but uh, what's wrong with this uh, picture? <laughs> oh, I'd like to guess the puzzle. What is it? Home field advantage. Hey! Yeah, but maybe it would be better if he didn't win. Well, he gave it the old college try. Best idea of the year. Look at Terry Mulholland. Can't get the ball out of the glove, so he'll throw them both over for the out. The put it on, please put it on strip tease right here. Look at the guy, bottom right corner of your screen, who's going to lose his pants. <laughs> and finally, to the minor leagues and the I'm All Wet Award. One and two as the sprinklers oh. go on. Oh, you gotta oh, love goodness. it. Now you gotta love this, folks. <laughs> <laughs> this is a classic. Oh my. Well, we're down here now in the Cardinal Clubhouse, and all right, so the Cardinals didn't make the playoffs of the World Series. But maybe it wasn't their fault. Maybe it was just part of a great big plot. Remember I told you my theory? This is the way I explained it to my three-year-old son, Matthew. Hi, boys and girls, and welcome to Mr. Mike's Neighborhood. Today, we're gonna to talk about the baseball Cardinals. The Cardinals are off to a very slow start this season. Can you say struggling? I knew you could. You see, the Cardinals aren't doing the things it takes to win like pitching and fielding and hitting, especially hitting. Can you say slump? Unfortunately, the New York Mets aren't in a slump. Their hitting has been good, so has their fielding, and so has their pitching, especially their pitching. All of that has given them a big lead over the Cardinals in the National League's Eastern Division. Which brings us to another big word, boys and girls. Can you say geography? I knew you could. This map shows St. Louis is much further west than Atlanta, and the Braves are in the Western Division. If the Cards were in the Western Division, they'd still be in the pennant race. Can you say conspiracy? I knew you could. Next time, boys and girls, we're gonna talk about another big word. Can you say petition? Whatever it was, the Cardinals didn't win their division, but maybe it's just as well. After all, the Angels and Red Sox were division winners in the American League, the Mets and Astros in the National League, and sometimes during the playoffs and World Series, things got pretty ugly. How about the home run that shouldn't have been in the AL Championship Series? Dave Henderson going back to the wall, and he knocks Bobby Gritch's ball over the wall. Thank you very much, Dave. 
In the National League Championship Series, Len Dykstra, ground ball, nice play here by Glenn Davis, and he'll make the play. Wait, wait, he forgot the ball. Oh, well. Best play by a second baseman, Billy Doran, with the diving stab. Best play by a pitcher, Charlie Kerfeld of the Astros. Merry uh, Christmas, Charlie, all right. The World Series, it had its ups and downs, a little bit of both right here to start things off as the walls come tumbling down. Look out below. All right, the Gold Glove Award to Tim Tuffle of the Mets. Whoops. A couple more of those home runs that got away. Dwight Evans, he's got it. No, no he doesn't, a home run. Same thing for Daryl Strawberry of the Mets. He's got it. No, it's a home run. And finally, the Baseball Blooper of the Year, Game 6 of the World Series, between the legs of Bill Buckner giving the Mets the victory. Coming up next, who says hockey is a violent sport? But first, another question for Mike Headroom. I have a question. Tell me, was it true that Bill Buckner was almost hit by a bus after game six of the World Series? Yes. It's true, it's true, it's true, it's true. But fortunately for him, though, it rolled between his legs. <laughs> I kill me, I kill me, I kill me. I kill me. The arena, home of the St. Louis Hockey Blues, in 1986 was a great year for the Blues. Blues finishing just one step away from the Stanley Cup Finals. And one of the big reasons for that was the acquisition of defenseman Charlie Bourgeois. And we're going to join Charlie right here in a very familiar site, the penalty box. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Mike. Come on in. Thanks a lot. Charlie, you know, you spend so much time in the penalty box, it, it must seem like a home away from home for you. Oh, uh, whatever gave you that idea, Mike. Just a second, uh, check my messages here. Charlie, this is your attorney. We need to talk about those incentive clauses you have in your contract. Give me a call at your earliest convenience. Charlie, this is Mom. I saw your game last night on TV. You should be ashamed of yourself the way you acted. You know you could poke someone's eye out with that stick. Charlie, uh, we'll get those messages later if you don't mind. Uh, Charlie, you know, I love hockey, but there are some critics who say it's, it's too violent. What's your reaction to that? Too violent? Who says it's too violent? That, too that, violent, Charlie. Too I, violent. I didn't say it, it was too uh, violent. Jerry Randall too violent. said that. That's mm, right. Maybe Charlie was right. Now, here's Marty McSorley and Nick Fatu getting ready to fight. All right, now they're setting up. All right. Now they're still getting ready. All right, now they're all set. They're all set to fight. All right, here comes the first punch. Now, who says it's a violent sport? All right, Bruce Bell of the Blues, nailed by Wendell Clark. Now, I guess this is what they mean right here about getting benched. Over he goes and into the bench. All right, now here's something you don't see very often. The goalie going down the ice to fight. Who else? The other goalie. Now, Brian Sutter of the Blues, no doubt the best sword fighter in the league. Ooh, he got him. Now, this one had to hurt. Ouch. Now, it doesn't have to be a player that gets you, of course. It could always be the crossbar. Close line by the crossbar. Now, that is bad. Bad to the bone. Bad to the bone. Bad. 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 Bad to the bone. All right, the shot of the year. Now, check this out. Ben Wilson of the Blackhawks off the boards and in. Now, the worst shot of the year or worst opportunity. Here's Steve Larmer of the Blackhawks, a wide open net right here, and he misses. And if you can put the puck in the net or can't, you might as well go in there yourself. Now, one thing about goaltender Greg Nolan of the Blues, he's very acrobatic in making a save. Great save right here. Now, watch him again. Here's another. He's out of position, comes back to make the great save. Now, Wayne Gretzky of the Edmonton Oilers, here's why they call him the great Gretzky, goes behind the net and still makes the perfect pass for the goal. Now, once again, here's the great Greg Millen on another great save on the ice, makes one, now two saves. Now, here are a couple of guys who look like they belong in the back of a car, some of those dolls with the bouncing heads. Now, watch the fan right here from behind the pipe. He wants a little more. He wants more. Keep going. Watch him. Watch him. Yeah, go. Now, where did the puck go? Where did the puck go? All right, let's play the game. Wait, the puck is caught in this guy's skate. And here are some more very graceful moments.
And we close with the graceful art of officiating. Right there, down he goes. And Doug Gilmore of the Blues says, who needs a Kleenex when you have teammates? And finally, I guess, this is what they mean by a stick-up. <laughs> Well, I want to thank Charlie Bourgeois for joining us. Boy, what a gentleman, huh? You know, St. Louis doesn't have an NBA franchise, and thank goodness, because there are a lot of big guys in that league, too. It's another non-violent sport. Yeah, for instance, these two guys, seven foot seven inch Manute Bull, fighting it out with seven foot one inch Juwan Oldham. Had enough? No, here they go again. And if uh, that pounding doesn't work, uh, just try stepping on him. All right, we continue with a splash, or make that a flush. It's down and in. Best pass a year. This is the way to do it, right into the basket. Now, here's Chris Mullen of the Golden State Warriors proving what goes up doesn't necessarily have to come down. Now, look at this. Duncan, the Nets mascot, beams the little kid. Now, now, he wants to apologize. All right, the best long shot of the year. Herb Williams of the Indiana Pacers, all the way the length of the court. He got it, and you can count it. Now, here's my favorite NBA player, Detlef Shrimp with a little trouble keeping his hands on the ball and his feet on the floor. Now here's the shooting stylings of Kiki Vandewick. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with the Hall of Fame skyhook. Nice touch here by Jawan Oldham. Now here's John Long, formerly of Detroit, with a long shot and in. Now, hey buddy, we're trying to do a show here. Wake up. Hey buddy, buddy, we're trying to do the Highlight Zone special. Can you join us, please? Hey buddy, wake up. Can we continue now? Can we continue? All right, thank you very much. Jerry Seasting, move of the year. Between the legs, then he fires up the shot, and he will get it to go. Bill Walton of the Celtics on defense, off his hands, and in. And there's more. Shake yourself at home. Come shake yourself, run of the family. I'm talking to you so strong. All right, let's move on to the Generosity Award. John Lucas, all alone, gives it to Akeem with a miss. The good shot right here, it'll go off the referee. The yeah, I planned it that way. Akeem on the floor gets the rebound. Now, sometimes the babies act like grown-ups, and the grown-ups act like babies. <laughs> Now here's Byron Scott of the Lakers. Look, Ma, no hands. Ooh. Now here's a shot that's no good. Yes, it is. No, no, it isn't. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, best way to sneak into the good seats right here by Danny Vrains of the Jazz. And here's Kenny Walker of the Knicks. Beautiful move and the nice touch right there. Pretty shot. Now, here's what we mean by when we say dancing cheek to cheek. All right. College basketball referees, they're always in the perfect spot to call the foul. Whoops. You know, Danny Ainge of the Boston Celtics, he used to play Major League Baseball. Now, here he is right here practicing his fastball. And here's a nice touch here by Charles Barkley of the 76 who just misses. Cliff Robinson, formerly of the Washington Bullets, watch this shot. It will be off the rim, off the backboard, and back in. And who says Karen Foss is not a fox? All right. Dennis Johnson of the Boston Celtics with a pretty half-court shot right there. Gets it to go. John Bagley of the Cleveland Cavaliers. He'll throw it deep down court and in. Now in Milwaukee, here's Crazy George, little juggling act. He'll get the uh, lady to bite the apple, do it a couple more times. And this time, though, she bites his finger. <laughs> Best shot in high school basketball. Guy goes to save the ball behind the back, and then he will get it to go in. But it can be rough for referees. Look, at five foot seven, Jess Kersey trying to break up two seven-footers, and he takes him down. The introduction of the year. A news conference to announce the new head coach of the Portland Trailblazers. And as you can see, he will make a great first impression right here. <laughs> All right, Larry Bird of the Celtics, he'll get this one off the rim, the backboard, the shot clock, and back in. 
Larry can hit it from anywhere. This time from behind the basket, he will get it to go. Best camera work right here. Give an Emmy to the Highlight Zone photographer. All right, Granville Waiters of the Chicago Bulls with a nice touch. Best double dunk of the year, Monroe Douglas of the Billikens. One, two, judges. What do you give them? What do you give them, judges? Yeah, a 10 across the board. Here's Fred Roberts of the Boston Celtics. He will get this one to stay somehow on the rim. And Bob Richards was at the game. And I guess this is what they mean when they say stuck up. <laughs> Best dunk of the year, Akeem Olajuwon right here as he just does miss. And hey, Byron, Byron, go Illini. Know what I mean? Know what I mean? I know what you mean. And finally, most expensive shot of the year, he breaks the backboard, and for that, he gets some high fives. And of course, you gotta love it. Don't go away, just ahead, bloopers from the gridiron. You'll be sorry if you miss it. Now here's another question for Mike Headroom. Yeah, Mike Headroom, I got a question for you. Is it true that the legendary football coach Bear Bryant wanted to move to St. Louis after he retired at Alabama? That's, 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 that's right. He wanted to get as far away from, away from, away from, away from. Far away from football as possible. <laughs> So far, all you've seen are bloopers by athletes. You might get the idea that we're picking on them, but we're not. Everybody makes mistakes. For instance, I recall one night on the Eyewitness News at 10 o'clock. It was during the Missouri High School football playoffs, and I had a little problem getting the scores on the air. It seems I ran out of time. The next day, here's how I explained what happened. This is 60 Seconds, a KSDK sports investigative magazine. Let's take you back to last night. That'll go for a touchdown. Hawks go on to win it final 19 to nothing, 25 straight now for Hazelwood Central. And we got a whole bunch of other scores. Why didn't I have time for the scores? Who decides how much time I get? Maybe the answer is behind this door. This is Louis Benito, producer of the 10 o'clock no, news. No. Louis Benito, why didn't I get How'd you time? get this camera in here? Get, get out of here. Excuse me, sir. We How have a question for no you. No comment. No, I can't believe you. Security. No, no comment. What's he trying to hide? What's he trying to cover up? Why didn't I have enough time? We may never know. I'm sorry, you're out of time again. I'm sorry. We may never know. This has been a year of transition for the football Cardinals. They brought in a new head coach, Gene Stallings, and they named a new number one running back, Stump Mitchell. And Stump joins us now. And Stump, you're not exactly the biggest guy on the field. How do you deal with all the punishment of all those big guys? Well, it's pretty easy, Mike. Uh, you know, the defensive coach usually tells his players to stand tall. So when I get the ball, I just uh, be myself. They're taller than I am, and I get the duck on them. Stump, there's a question I've always wanted to ask you. How did you get your nickname, Stump? Does it have anything to do with your... Hi, uh, that was a stupid question. Uh, never mind. All right, let's begin with the It's Not Over Till It's Over award to the Cardinals against the Redskins' final play of the game. Burks by Sikahima, goes to Stump Mitchell. Mitchell, eh, no place to run. Who's he gonna pass it off to? Ah, uh, Stumper goes to by Sikahima. Sikahima running this way. Oh, and there goes Deron Wolfley. Now Wolfley's gotta get rid of it. He goes to Stump. Now Stump's gonna go all the way. He's gonna go up the sidelines. He's gonna go all the way. Uh, no, no, no. Run out of the bounds. All right, best tackle of the year. Cardinal game against the Eagles. Watch this as by Sikahima. Again, waits for the punt. He'll come this way, and he is tackled by his own man, Ron Wolfley. <laughs> Second best tackle of the year. Same game, Philadelphia and the Cardinals. Great pass, Mike Quick. Oh, just a little out of his reach. Boom! He knocks over the cameraman. Not such a great pass after all. Worst lateral of the year right here. Bears in Tampa Bay. First, it's intercepted by the Bears. Now, not a lot of room to run, so he wants to lateral it. Now, Mike Richardson, he wants to lateral it. Right to Van Heflin, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and he's going to go all the way for a bucket here's touchdown all right best catch of the year watch the guy on the sidelines with the diving grab all right now he's helped to his feet yeah thank you very much nice grab all right best hit eric hipple of the lions watch this right here boom he loses his helmet and there are some nasty rumors going around about penn state no, no, just kidding. All right. The best juggling act of the year, Dolphins and Patriots, Marino to pass. It's complete. No, it's incomplete. No, it's complete. No, it's, it's incomplete. 
best celebration of the year, the Indiana State High School Championship. This touchdown won it. So the celebration, well, it starts slow, and then it starts to build, and build, and build, and it's still building. Someone's gonna suffocate under there. All right, best hit in the 86 Super Bowl, Jim McMahon of the Bears, as he goes airborne. Now here's a high school player getting a jump on things. Another pretty good juggling act coming up here by Mark Lewis of the Packers, and he makes the grab. The old flea flicker here by the Denver Broncos, and John Elway will get it, and then to the end zone for the pretty touchdown. Steelers quarterback Mark Malone to the end zone, Rich Ehrenberg with a tiptoe touchdown. Now here's Herman under the Lions. He thinks he's got a fair catch. Uh-uh, sorry about that, Herman. That's tackled by the invisible man. Watch this, getting Buford McGee. Not only that, he strips him of the ball, and Kevin Ross of the Chiefs will take it in for the touchdown. Now here's Steve Young of the Buccaneers, proving you always must concentrate on the game. Not the cheerleader, Steve. Don't look at the cheerleader, Steve. Look out for the wall, boom. Now more juggling, this time Young, it's back to pass. Watch this, throwing into a crowd, and it's batted around one, two, three, four times, and finally it comes down to make the catch. More hitting now. How's this as Ron Brown of the Rams is absolutely leveled here by the New Orleans Saints. Ooh. Now the only one that can stop the great Walter Payton is who else? Well, the official, of course. <laughs> Now here's Tony Dorsett of the Cowboys. He's stopped too by the Highlight Zone cameraman. Uh, sorry about that guy. Best touchdown dance, Irving Fryer. Ah, uh, patty cake, patty cake, Baker's man. All right, Irving. Another big hit coming up. Somebody warned Phil McConkey of the Giants, because here comes Carl Lee. Boom! Ooh. Best imitation of Pee Wee Herman. Bruce Smith of the Bills after sacking Dan Marino. Come on, Bruce. Yeah, way to go. All right, Bruce. Best nosedive. Once again, the stumper. The Hail Mary pass of the year. Patriots and Rams. Time is running out. And Irving Fryer in a crowd will somehow calm down with it as the Patriots beat the L.A. Rams with no time left on the clock. Jeff Chadwick of the Detroit Lions, another chance meeting with a photographer. And now it's Don Blackman of the New England Patriots here. He'll have a touchdown if, if he can pick up the ball. All right, he's got it. Come on, Don, you can get it. Don't let it go out of the end zone, Don. Don, 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 oh, Don, Don, you don't get the touchdown. Don, 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 Don. And finally, Charles Martin of the Packers, he has a hit list. Let's look at the numbers. There's number nine, number 34. Zoom in a little closer now, if you would. You can see those numbers. Wait, down at the bottom, a little closer still. Bob Richards is on the hit list. No, this wasn't the best year for football in St. Louis, but it could be better than next year when there might not be football in St. Louis. Yes, I know you're sick of it, but once again, the rumors are persisting that the Cardinals might move to Phoenix. Well, what if they did move? Years from now, what will we tell our children? It might go something like this. All right, the name of this story is called Fractured Football Fairy Tales. Once upon a time, there was a team called the Football Cardinals, and they played in a stadium downtown. The football Cardinals had been a part of the town for many, many years, and people used to come from miles around to see them play. But one day, the owner of the football Cardinals decided that the downtown stadium was too small and that he couldn't make enough money, so he moved the team to another town. The fans he left behind were sad. They felt the team was a part of them. Well, time passed and passed and passed, and pretty soon, the fans found other things to root for. There was baseball, and hockey, and soccer, and they forgot about the football Cardinals. In fact, even though the football Cardinals were in a new city with a big new stadium, they were the same old team. So the people there forgot about them too. And one day, they just disappeared forever. Will there ever be football here again? Well, that's hard to say, but maybe if we all close our eyes and wish for football, you never know what might happen. Close your eyes and wish. Sometimes wishes do come true.
Still to come, the very touching story of professional soccer. And now time for one final question for Mike Headroom. Mike Headroom, what makes you such a sports expert? Yeah, what's your background? My, 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 my background? My background? Looks like a, a lot of wavy lines to me. Get it? Wavy lines? <laughs> <laughs> Light Zone Special has been brought to you by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Bush Beer, the beer with a taste as smooth as its name. We're here at the Soccer House, home of the St. Louis Steamers Soccer Practice, and of course, when you talk St. Louis, you talk soccer, because this is really one of the soccer meccas of the United States. And we're here with Don Ebert, who has been with the St. Louis Steamers now, what, 30, 40 years. Uh, Don, must seem like 30, 40 years. You've been around a long time. I feel, sometimes I feel like 30, 40 years old. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. I've always wondered about soccer players, especially you guys in the MISL. You guys are in great shape. You might be the best athletes in the United States. Why don't you do something more lucrative than soccer? Why don't we? <laughs> I think if you asked my father, he was trying to tell me to play baseball. I should have listened to him and stuck with that baseball bat, not this little soccer ball. Let me tell you. My son, he's picking up a golf club. I, I watched the Skins game. He's a golfer from now on. How did you get involved in soccer? Well, growing up here, you know, that's all we did was play. I played a lot of baseball and I played a lot of soccer. And I just really enjoyed the game of soccer and I kind of got bored with baseball and everything. And uh, I just stuck with it and I slowly developed from being my best sport. So I just enjoyed playing it more than anything else. Now, you've always been one of the Steamers' leading scorers since you've been here. And I notice after each goal, a lot of your teammates will come up and hug you. <laughs> do you score the goals because you want the team to win, or do you like the hug? Oh, hey, we're a tight-knit family. You know, <laughs> that one for all, one all for one. But uh, that hugging sometimes gets a little carried away, as you can see. Sometimes you get some injuries. But hey, it's all part of the game. They can hug and kiss you as long as we win. <laughs> Feelings. Feelings like I've never lost you. And feelings like I'll never have you Again in my life Feeling Oh, oh feeling Oh, oh feeling Again in my arms Feeling oh, 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 Only kidding, we're only kidding guys uh, Don, thanks a lot oh, for hey. being with us No, this is how you do it, here <laughs> Don, thanks, thanks a lot What a nice guy I, I think I'm going to get you a Christmas present next year And here's a good idea for that KKL presents a Christmas gift you and your whole family will cherish. A once-in-a-lifetime offer. Sports songs you know by heart. That's right, your favorite sports tunes you'll get. To Live and Die in St. Louis by Joaquin Andujar. I'm in the Playoffs, Where Are You by O.J. Anderson. What's That I Smell by Neil Lomax. We, uh, we stunk. You'll also get By the Time I Get to Phoenix by Bill Bidwell. California, Here I Come, again by Harry Arnest. And I'm Okay, You're Okay by Jim Kreiner and Woody Widenhofer. You know, Woody, Woody shouldn't run off the mouth so much. Uh, I don't know what, what his problem is. Uh, uh, obviously, we're just trying to run up the points. And if you order right now, we'll throw in volume two of sports songs you know by heart, including Contract, What Contract by Jacques Demers, At Least We're Not Peaking Early by Pat McBride, and Don't Get Your Dauber Down by Gene Stallings. I'm a long way from uh, having my dauber down, I'll assure you that. Frustrated, maybe. Irritated, yeah. Uh, dauber down. Mm -mm. How much would you pay for an offer like this? $395. $295. Now, this first-time TV offer can be yours for the low sum of $195. Send check or money order to KCAL Presents Sports Songs. Post Office Box 000, St. Louis, Missouri, 8412. CODs not accepted. <laughs> well, that's a wrap for our Highlight Zone special. I hope you had a good time. If you did, don't forget, the Highlight Zone can be seen every Thursday night at 10 o'clock on the Eyewitness News Update. If not, why don't we keep it uh, our little secret? Happy holidays, and may the new year be your best ever.